Hi, welcome to the Ohio Health Survivorship video lecture series. I'm Kyleen Beck, a registered dietitian. Today we're going to talk about Ohio oncology, nutrition, and survivorship. So why is nutrition important? Well, cancer survivors unfortunately have a higher risk of developing another type of cancer, osteoporosis, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, and they could also have a reduction in their daily functions. So nutrition is important to try to help and maintain a healthy lifestyle and help prevent from some of these from occurring. So where do you start? Um, how to make a healthy lifestyle change? You know, you want to take one step at a time. Um, make one change at a time. It's unrealistic to think that in one day you're going to change all of your unhealthy habits. So you want to make one change at a time and progress from there. So you want to start out by setting realistic goals. Um, you don't want to, let's say you're somebody that doesn't like to eat salad, but then you go and say that I'm going to start eating salad for lunch every single day. That is an unrealistic goal. So to be successful, try to set realistic goals one at a time. So for example, if you're somebody that needs to increase your fruit consumption, maybe you would say I'm going to start eating a piece of fruit every morning for breakfast to try to increase my fruit. You want to also try to establish a lifestyle that is sustainable. Um, you want, starting to do that, sorry, um, to be able to sustain a, sorry, <laughs> what's up? I would just say start from the beginning of that thought. Okay. Yeah. Um, to, you also want to be able to establish a healthy lifestyle and be able to do something that is sustainable. To be able to do that, you want to avoid fad diets. So that would be something like uh, the keto diet or the paleo diet or the Adkins diet. Um, while those may work, um, they aren't something that would probably be sustainable for anyone. Um, you also want to avoid any kind of extreme exercise regimens if they are uh, hard to maintain. So for example, if you're somebody that is used to a sedentary lifestyle, you don't just want to go out and say, okay, I'm going to start running three miles a day for the next six days. Um, that doesn't really lead to a very successful lifestyle change. Um, when, able, when, when starting to make a lifestyle change, that's exactly what it is. It is a lifestyle change. This isn't something that we could do for a short period of time and go back to the way things that were before. So you want to, like we said, start out one change at a time, set realistic goals. Um, you also want to allow yourself those indulgences. We always go by the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of the time, do what you're supposed to do. 20% of the time, allow yourself those indulgences. So set aside maybe one meal out of one day of the week to be able to give yourself those maybe unhealthier habits. We want to start by establishing a healthy weight. So how do we do that? Um, so the best way to improve or maintain overall health and possibly lower your risk of cancer is maintaining that healthy weight. So what is a healthy weight? Well, the quick and easy guideline for a healthy weight is determining what your BMI is. A healthy BMI would be anywhere from 18.5 to 25. Um, but that, that's a quick method that you can use to determine if you're within that range. It uses both your height and your weight. Um, but again, that's only a guideline. It doesn't really determine what your body fat percentage is. So for example, if you're somebody who likes to lift weights or very muscular, your BMI is going to tend to be higher because muscle weighs more than fat. Um, so BMI is just generally used as a guideline. What we really like to look for is what your percentage of body fat is. So the higher your body fat percentage, your greater risk of cancer. And really, it's more so focusing about your, your fat content around your abdomen area. The higher your fat content around your abdomen area, the more your hormones are disrupted, which could lead to maybe those hormone-sensitive cancers like breast cancer and uterine cancer. There really is no simple or inexpensive way to measure your body fat percentage, so it's always good to seek the advice of your physician or a registered dietitian to determine what a healthy weight for you is. So next we want to talk about how to maintain that healthy lifestyle. We, I'm sure you've often heard people say, like, eat mainly plant-based. We don't like to use the word plant-based in this slide. We're going to mainly use the word plant-heavy. We want you to still be able to eat 
some meat and animal products, but we still want you to mainly focus on plant-heavy diet. It doesn't solely have to be plant-based like a vegetarian or a vegan. Why we focus on being plant heavy is that we would like to get more fiber in our diet. The average American is lacking fiber in our diet and we're only getting about 15 grams per day. Most Americans need between 25 and 35 grams of fiber daily. So in order to do that, we wanna to try to get at least five servings of fruits and vegetables in daily. Um, so what we always say is eat the rainbow. You know, so you wanna choose a variety of fruits and vegetables of all different colors. No one single food can prevent cancer. So eat different colors from various food groups. Um, the higher your fiber intake, the lower that your chance of developing breast and colorectal cancer. Stop, I wanna go back to the five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Oh, <laughs> just start at the top of the slide? Okay, all right. The first thing that we wanna talk about with eating predominantly plant heavy is to get more fiber. The average American only gets about 15 grams of fiber a day. And when in reality, we need about 25 to 35 grams of fiber. To, in order to do that, you wanna to try to get at least five servings of fruits and vegetables in, in a day. And what we always say is eat the rainbow. You don't wanna choose any particular one fruit or one vegetable. No one single food can prevent cancer. So we say choose a multiple different food groups, food colors to be able to get the different variety. Um, God, I lost my train of thought. Ah! Okay. <laughs> okay. Again at the top? Yep. All right. <laughs> Why do we want to eat predominantly plant heavy is one way is to get more fiber in our diet. The average American only gets about 15 grams of fiber daily. When in actuality, we need about 25 to 35 grams. And one way to do that is to increase to at least eating five servings of fruits and vegetables daily, which that might sound like a daunting task, you know, but like we said back in the beginning, you know, set a realistic goal. So that might be start adding a piece of fruit to a breakfast to increase your fruit consumption. In order to get five, you could eat maybe a fruit for breakfast, a fruit and a vegetable for lunch, and a fruit and a vegetable for dinner. And that would count as five servings. An actual serving of fruit and vegetable is a half of a cup cooked or canned, or one cup of whole or raw. You also wanna make sure you're eating a variety of fruits and vegetables, so you wanna eat the rainbow. Choose di different foods of different colors to be able to get that variety. No one single food can prevent cancer. The higher fiber, the fiber intake, the lower your chance of developing breast and colorectal cancer. Also with eating predominantly plant heavy is increasing your antioxidants. What are antioxidants? Those protect our cells from damage and damaged cells can lead to possibly cancer. So antioxidants are found naturally in plant-based fruit foods and some animal products. As you can see, there is a few of antioxidants here, so like vitamin E, which is found in corn, soybean, safflower oil, wheat germ, nuts, selenium, which is found in Brazil nuts, beef, seafood, turkey, and chicken. Also in vitamin C, which is kiwi, citrus fruits, strawberries, cantaloupes, broccoli, and then zinc, which is found in like oysters, red meat, chicken, beans, nuts, also in your whole grains and your fortified foods like cereal. So another thing with eating a predominantly plant heavy diet is increasing your phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are plant chemicals that act as antioxidants, and, but they're only found in your plant products. So those are found in fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, seeds, whole grains, herbs, and spices. So as you can see, you know, there's a bunch of different colors of each of the food groups, so eat the rainbow. You know, so for the green group, you could have broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, collard greens, kale, spinach. Purple group could be like purple grapes, blueberries, cherries, plums, red cabbage. Orange group could be like oranges, carrots, sweet potatoes, winter squash. And then kind of your reddish, purplish group in there would be apples, pomegranates, raspberries, and then of course dark chocolate. One thing to note is that 
you mainly want to get most of your nutrients from food. Your body handles nutrients better when it's coming from foods rather than supplements. Um, supplements always can have a downside to them. Um, they may interact with some of your medications that may, you may be on, and they're not approved by the FDA, so they're not, go they're not regulated by the U.S. government. So we say check with your physician if you're on any supplements, you know, but mainly the most important thing is to try to get most of your nutrients from your food first. A multivitamin, though, that could always be a good choice, especially if you think that you're not getting enough variety. So how should we eat? What should our plate look like? So the, the new American plate kind of lays it out for you exactly how your plate should look. So you want to limit your animal protein to about three ounces cooked or like a third of your plate or something about like people like to say something about the size of a deck of cards. All right, you want to make sure you're choosing lean meats, you know, and avoid fried, um, breaded, those heavily fatted meats. So, and then a third of your, another part of your plate should be choosing whole grains. You want to make sure you're choosing whole grains like brown rice, whole wheat pasta, and avoid those refined grains, you know, like white bread, white rice. Whole grain products are better for you. They're going to get that fiber content in there. You want to limit your red meat and your processed meats. So you can still incorporate some servings of red meat, but you mainly want to choose chicken, fish, turkey, beans as your source of protein with just a few servings of red meat in there. The more you eat red meat and processed meat, you have more of an increasing risk for developing colon cancer. You also want to limit empty calories. They serve no nutritional benefit to you. So you want to avoid candies, pastries, sweetened juices, sweetened cereals. Save those things for those meals that we talked about, like your, your indulgence meal or your cheat meal. And you want to avoid fried foods. So what your plate should look like is a third of it be your meat, a third of it be your whole grain, and then the rest of it fill with those non-starchy vegetables and fruits. So that's how you can try to get those five servings of fruits and vegetables in in a day. If you're someone that has a big plate and you don't feel like you're going to be full unless your plate is full, fill that plate with fruits and vegetables. You also want to be physically active. That helps maintain that body weight. So you want to start with shorter sessions with lower intensity, especially for somebody that has led a, a sedentary lifestyle. You know, like I said earlier, you don't want to just set a goal that you're going to go out and start running three miles five days a week if you've been sitting on the couch for the last six months. You know, so start with shorter sessions and lower intensity. So that could be go out for a 10 or 15 minute brisk walk and then you build from there. You want to increase your intensity over time. Your goal is to get to moderate to vigorous activity for 30 minutes for most days of the week. There is some research out there that shows that high intensity exercise could reduce your immune system. So always check with your physician before you start any exercise routine. To be successful with exercise, there's a few tips that may help you. Make a schedule. Schedule that time in on when you're gonna get your exercise in. A lot of times that we hear, well, I don't have the time. Well, it's finding the time versus making the time. If you set a schedule and you set an exact time of when you're gonna exercise, you're gonna be more likely to be able to get that in. Have a partner, you know, have somebody with you that's gonna help motivate you and have that accountability. And choose that partner wisely. Make sure that partner is just as motivated as you are to make sure you're getting up and moving. Make sure you stretch, you wanna warm up and cool down so you don't have any injuries when you're working out. And again, also check with your physician to make sure and this exercise routine is good for you. Let's talk about alcohol. So you wanna limit alcohol. That's also one way to kinda of lead that healthy lifestyle. First of all, alcohol is empty calories. There's no nutritional benefit to that. So alcohol can just tend to lead to weight gain. Also, the consumption of alcohol is linked to cancer. So too much alcohol can lead to liver cancer and cancers of like the GI tract. So like mouth cancer, cancer of the esophagus. It's also associated with breast and colorectal cancer. So a serving size of alcohol is like a 12 ounce beer, five ounces of wine, or one and a half ounces of liquor. Men's serving size, they can have up to two servings or less, and women can have one serving or less per day. 
Soy is always a topic of controversy. So let's talk about soy. Soy, it is a good source of protein and a good source of fiber, and it can be used as a meat alternative. So maybe when you're trying to limit that red meat, you could add soy, something like tofu, instead. It also has those antioxidant properties that we talked about earlier, you know, that help protect that cell damage. So three servings per day or less is still considered safe. Soy has the phytochemical isoflavonoid, and that is what causes the controversy. Breast cancer and other hormone-sensitive cancers should avoid high doses of soy and soy isoflavonoids because it affects estrogen. The higher levels can increase your risk for breast cancer progression. So, but three servings a day is still considered safe. So how do you incorporate maybe more sources of soy in your diet? Soy milk. You wanna choose low fat or non-fat soy milk, milk and use in place of milk in recipes and drinks. Tofu, um, you can add tofu to foods instead of meats. So sometimes buying tofu can be a little tricky. So the extra firm tofu is best for if you're going to stir fry it or grill it because it's real firm and stays together in one piece. Now the softer the silken tofu is best used for blending. So like if you're making it in soups. You can also use it as a sour cream substitute. So if a recipe calls for sour cream, use half the amount of sour cream and the other half amount with the silken or the soft tofu. That can re reduce the fat content. You can also do soy nuts instead of roasted peanuts. Those are good snacking. And then also edamame. You eat edamame right out of the pod, but you wanna use your teeth and your fingers and get the beans straight out of the pod. You eat the beans and throw the pod away. It's an excellent soy source of fiber. So we've talked about many different ways of trying to get a healthy diet. And in general, these are just overall good, general healthy guidelines. Some though may have other uh, health issues like diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease. And so that's when we recommend that you seek the help of a registered dietitian for more of those individualized plans. Registered dietitians are li we're licensed professionals. We can provide you education and care plans that are specific to those each individual needs. Make sure you talk with your physician if you're interested in more individualized education. For more information, please look at MD Anderson's website for the Survivorship Nutrition Guidelines for Cancer Survivor. For more information on the Ohio Health Oncology Nutrition Program, please call Cancer Call at the numbers listed. Thank you.